All right, guys, we all know three things are certain in life. Death, ice hockey is the greatest sport in the world, and we bring you weekly power rankings. And we're here for week 14, and Jaden's going to get us started. All right, I guess you can add a fourth to that one, and that's San Jose being at the bottom. <laughs> oh, God, you can't call me out that soon, dude. <laughs> Yeah, but no, um, you are right. They, they, yeah, they they get a win. Uh, I guess you know that's what you you celebrate there. But it's just not enough to move from the bottom. As I believe the other teams around them also had wins. Uh, the one win they had was against Montreal. Uh, they lo- had a big lose against Toronto, seven one. And today they lose five uh, four to Ottawa, with only eighteen shots, but had four goals. So you know, commendable effort, but just the one win. Look, and we've got to point out, they're finally into double digits for the wins. So, you know, that was huge. Yeah, it took huge half the season. <laughs> it only took half the season, yeah. But, look, it is what it is. We all know, knew this was going to be the case for the San Jose. So, all right, moving on to 31. And, you know, another team pretty much in the same boat, uh, Chicago Blackhawks. All righty, they are my 30. Oh, oh, he's got to move. I made up. moves, boy. No. He's made moves. <laughs> oh, look, you know they've they've had a they had an okay week, I guess, in the sense <laughs> that they also got a win. Uh, they beat the Calgary Flames four three, which, you know, Calgary has been a lot better as of late. Um, they were very competitive against Edmonton uh, in a one two loss where they held Edmonton to only fifteen shots, which was very impressive. Um, they were they lost one two to Winnipeg Jets as well. Again, another you know impressive performance. So you know two strong firepower teams, and they've uh, only just lost two two one in both of those. And then a one uh, three loss against the Dallas Stars today. So yeah, look really tough week in terms of their opponents. Um, and they were competitive in every single game. So I can one hundred percent see. Uh, why you've made the move to 30. Um, but for me, they just they stayed stayed put. Yeah, it's not a huge move by any means. No, um, it, exactly. The team moving down for me, Anaheim, of course. Uh, yeah, they say 30. For me. Same boat, <laughs> uh, just the one win. Uh, they do play um, four games as well. And they start off, they lose to uh, the Detroit Red Wings in regulation 3-2, win against Nashville, lose to Carolina, and lose to Tampa Bay um, pretty significantly, um, getting over the double shots and um, conceding six goals and five goals. So I, I think just Chicago had a more competitive week uh, in regards to being close to the the teams that they versed, and Anaheim, though they did that at the start of the week, they um, kind of fell off at the end, and I feel like, I, feel like I just had to make the move just for that. Uh, they're pretty much equal on all other fronts, really. Uh, like they're two seven and one each, so yeah, <laughs> pretty much standard bottom um, bottom thir- um thirty to thirty two. Exactly, I think these three are pretty much locked in these final three positions. To be honest, uh, I guess, I guess we'll you could put Adam, 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 Anaheim up just because of the trades. <laughs> there was there was trades done. <laughs> they yeah, there was they, they they did have a trade, but nah, look, it is what it is. Uh, moving on to twenty nine, I've got remaining. The same is the Ottawa Senators at 29. Oh, Ooh, it's I just got, painful. I got them at 28. Oh, he's got them moving up one. Look, I... It I, is, I, it's, I it's another small thing. That. Yeah. I contemplated that, but also when I looked at their week, 3-6 lost to Calgary, 3-5 uh, lost to Buffalo, and then they get a 5-4 win against the San Jose Sharks who they conceded four goals on 18 shots against. So I just, look, they got the win against the Sharks, but it's not, and they didn't do it convincingly. So for me, I, I treated it almost as if it was just, you know, the two losses and I, and I wiped the, the win against San Jose. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, there's still something very, very wrong there. And this week didn't show me any any other reason. Yeah, to move uh, them up. probably one of the biggest disappointments of the season. Uh, on mm-hmm. to my 29, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Probably another yeah. big disappointing team with a disappointing season. 
Uh, similar week in regards to it, but they only play two games. They lose both games. Uh, five kneeled by the Jets, and then they come against the uh, informed Kraken and lose 7-4. So they lose both games. Uh, two difficult games, though, as well. Um, but I Six think that, though. Yeah, they are 2-4-4 uh, four, the... four in the last uh, 10 as well. They are, but the Kraken game today, in traditional Columbus fashion this season, they ha- they just happened to give up three leads. <laughs> just want to point that out. <laughs> they, they did lead. 1-0, 2-1, and 3-2 throughout the game. So, uh, at least they're consistent. Yeah, well, these teams are consistently bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just put a... Jesus Christ. Oh, bloody hell. All right. Um, <laughs> at 27 for me, I have the Minnesota Wild. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we thought they were on the right track and they were heading in the right direction and that's just gone completely kaput um they lose to the dallas stars 4-0 uh that won't be the only shutout of the week just fyi uh they then lose to dallas again 2-7 um they lose to philadelphia flyers 3-4 in ot the only point that they pick up this week and then they lose to the arizona arizona coyotes on a back-to-back 6-0 so shut out twice they conceded 21 goals whilst only scoring five, and they pick up one point of a possible eight. I mean, I get it. Dallas are a, a good side. Philly's doing pretty well, and the Coyotes are doing pretty well this this season. But you've got to pick up more than one point, and if you're not going to pick up more than one point, you've got to at least be competitive, right? Like, they were just trash. Yeah. No, that that is the problem. They did have a hard week in regards to schedule, but they underperformed even on a hard week, um, considering that. So they had to move down. Unfortunately, they can't go any further down because of just how rock solid those uh, bottom five are. But yep. uh, on to 26, I have the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, they're my 25 still. Yeah. But they, they don't... They they don't move. move <laughs> Still, by moving up. Uh, yeah, they, they don't move for me. They um, lose all three games. They shoot out, lose against Philly. They lose to San Jose on a back to back. And then they lose uh, in OT to the Oilers today, um, conceding over seven, um, 41 shots to their 24. So, yeah, uh, no movement. Only the, uh, what, two points out of that because of the OT points. But, yeah, it's probably just uh, another wait for the the draft season now at this point it's kind of kind of sad for him but it was always going to be hard with that division um even though that division isn't as strong as we thought it would be (laughs) yeah but no exactly we we expected them to be um you know pretty much this low for majority of the season so Hmm. all right 26 i have uh, remaining here who i didn't expect the buffalo sabers yeah they're my 25 yeah, look, I, again, That's the I last of uh, teams it. under 500 as well. <laughs> yeah, well, it just shows you, like, the bad teams are really bad, and most of the rest of them are, are right around that average, you know, um, average of the pack. But, yeah, the Buffalo Sabres, they lose 2-5 to the Seattle Kraken. They beat the Ottawa Senators 5-3, and then they lose um, 1-0 to the Vancouver Canucks. So... Harder week is in coming up against the Kraken and the Canucks, two absolutely informed teams, um, getting the win against the low, lower um, Ottawa Senators. So probably a week that you expected from them. Um, but again, I just I want to see more. Like they were competitive in in most of the games, but I, yeah, I, I need to see them starting to put together some wins. Otherwise. Um, yeah, they, they may as well be like Montreal and pre- packing their bags and preparing for the draft lottery. Mm. Alrighty, uh, 24 have the Calgary Flames. Now, this is my start of uh, teams basically from here up to basically the top 16. I feel like they're all extremely close, even including Calgary. Uh, you got Chicago uh, losing to Chicago at the start, so not a good start, but then they beat Ottawa. 
they beat uh, Arizona, um, both scoring six goals in that game, and then they uh, beat Vegas uh, today, 3-1. So, a, a lot of high-scoring games. Uh, I think their lowest they've, they they scored was three goals in the Chicago and Vegas game, so they're always putting up goals. And uh, honestly, I've been impressed with them as, of recently, so that's why um, they don't move up for me, but they're on that echelon now of um, teams that are competing to move up in around from here to 16 give or take and you know it's it's crazy to think that a team who's performing as well as Calgary as of late are sitting 24th but again it was that you know that average of the pack teams that we're talking about there's just so many of them this season that you can't have them all at 16 or 17 or 18 exactly they've all got to sort of flow down so yeah it's I guess it's because they were late to the party. <laughs> mm. They're also late coming up the rankings, but if they keep moving the way they are, they might find themselves pushing pretty quickly. All right, 23 for me, I have the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, yeah, same thing. Yeah, look, a, a better week for them in a sense. Um, they get a 3-2 win against the Anaheim Ducks. Um, then they... OT lose against the Detroit uh, Edmonton Oilers, uh, 2-3. 17 shots on goal, though, to 47. So it was, they were probably very lucky to get away with an OT loss there and not get absolutely blown apart. Um, however, they pick up a point, and then they beat the Los Angeles Kings today, 5-3. So they pick up five out of six uh, points for the week, and, you know... Uh, Although they played the the Kings on who are currently on a bit of a slide, they do come up against the Red Hot Oilers and take a point, um, and they get the job done against Anaheim, as you would expect. So, um, you know, all you can really ask for in a week from Detroit at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, no, they moved down for me just because I think another team's just slightly playing a little bit better than them. Um, But great result in regards to points for their season. Uh, for that week. Uh, on to 22. For me, I have the Washington Capitals. Uh, just moving down one, even though they had a good week. They uh, they start off, they beat LA. They 4-1 lose to Seattle. Then they beat the New York Rangers today by a goal. So, all things considered, pretty good week. Uh, it's just, I think they've been on a bit of a slide in regards to performance. And considering... Uh, like they don't they don't really put up much shots either 26 21 and then the one time they do 34 they conceded 41 so they're def I've always got concerns with this team that's why they moved down even though they had a good week in regards to points and look uh, I think even their um last 10 is not pretty at 3 5 and 2 so they got they got work to do and uh, probably need a string of two weeks of good results to get back into it um, you know, they've been on a bit of a slide, so one good week's hard to sort of exactly. bump them straight back up the up the uh the list. But all right, on to twenty one. I have the Pittsburgh Penguins moving down. Oh, I got yeah, <laughs> this is interesting. I got them at nineteen moving up. Yeah, look, it it's not really anything they did because they again they had a a reasonable week in a sense. They um they only get the one win, but they beat the Flyers 4-1. Um, really solid win there. They lose in OT 3-4 to the Vancouver Canucks. And then they lost today in OT to the Carolina Hurricanes 2-3. So they pick up four out of six points for the week. And they have a really tough week. They played three solid opponents. So, um, you know, good week in a sense. Uh, however, I just had a team... Yeah, slightly better moving above them. Um, and that's really all it was. I still think the Pens are playing some good hockey. I'm just still uncertain if this is a going to be for the rest of the season thing or if it's going to be a two-week thing and then they fall straight back to shit. So I do like the way they're playing um, and I think they will start to move up the the table um, as weeks come if they continue this uh, but they burnt me before so <laughs> alrighty uh, uh, my 21 uh, Arizona Coyotes um, team moving down just a little bit 
for me. There's one that we differ on big time, but uh, I have them at 17. All right. All right, so they start off the week, uh, 6-2 loss um, with 17 shots against the Jets. They go to OT and win against Boston. They 6-2 lose again uh, to Calgary, and then they win 6-0 against the Wild. Uh, so not not bad overall. Another 500 week. I think I'm just uh, a little uh, disappointed with them because it's been around 500 now for probably about a month. It's just been... Um, just like that par level. And I think a couple of teams that have been on this lower end echelons have just started picking up in regards to their gameplay compared to the to the Oats. So that's why I've made my move. Oh, that's fair. Um, they definitely could move down quickly for me as well if they don't start to yeah. pull their act together. I just like what they've done this season and how they've played and how they approached um, most of their games. Um, was disappointed in their two losses this week, but was quite impressed by their two wins. So um, they are hard to sort of get a grip on because um, one minute you're like, oh, these guys are definitely in for a wild card spot. And then all of a sudden you're like, eh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, look, I just haven't punished them down the, down the table too quickly yet, um, but it definitely could come in the next week or two if they fail to to perform and these teams just below them continue to perform well so we'll see how it goes all right 20 for me i have the tampa bay lightning uh yep so yeah i mean look they have a a pretty good week they go um unbeaten so they beat the la kings 3-2 in overtime they beat the new jersey devils 4-3 in overtime and they beat the anaheim ducks today 5-1 so the two the two you know playoff potential teams in the kings and devils they get the job done although it did take ot but the team that they should you know basically beat and beat easily the ducks they did and they got the job done so yeah, absolutely fantastic week for them. They take six out of six points. You, you can't really ask for any more. Um, yeah, they're still there. They're they they're they're in a playoff spot at the moment. They won't go away. They seem to have their little drop off, and then they 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 climb straight back. So, although they're not in the top sixteen yet because of some of their performances, uh, they they could find themselves in the top 16 as soon as, you know, next week, if not the week after, if they keep going the way they are. Alrighty. Uh, on to 18, I have the St. Louis Blues. Yeah, they're my 19. Uh, so, team that had, um, you know, an iffy week in regards to results, they uh, lose 5-1 to Florida. They beat Rangers 5-2. Then they go and OT lose against the Boston Bruins um, 3-4. So, Honestly, probably one of the hardest weeks um, in regards to schedule, Florida, Rangers, Bruins, and they, they come out uh, 500. I think it's probably one, one of the more consistent teams uh, down this echelon. I know they only had the, the 20 shots against the Rangers and came out with a 5-2 win. You know, explain that to me, but that just se- seems to be the way the season is. I've been impressed with their gameplay, and that's why they, they only moved down because, um, obviously... Uh, the team that was would was below him was Seattle has just had a, an amazing moment um, or run, and that's the only reason why they moved down one. But um, yeah, if it wasn't for that, they would have stayed they stayed flat. Sure, they've uh, yeah they've been quite impressive. Uh, all right, eighteen for me is uh, the New York Islanders. Alrighty, uh, sixteen for me. 16 for you yeah i just i just couldn't have them in my top 16 i know we talk about them being in every game um and that's one of the reasons they've got 10 ot losses um they just frustrate the shit out of me to be honest but they uh they lose two five to the vancouver canucks they win against toronto 4-3 in overtime oh you know what's new ot's for new york islanders i feel like it's every second game for these guys and then they lose one three to the nashville predators so they get the two points um even though, and, and it is a pretty pretty difficult week um in terms of fixture but yeah again 
I just, I know they're in every game most of the time, but I just, I don't like how they're, how they're sort of getting it done and, and their performance. I, I fear Sorokin. If you're coming up against the, the Islanders, you're probably like, shit, how, how are we going to beat this guy? Um, but in terms yeah. of their offense, yeah, I, I feel like... I, if you I just... will say for the um, Preds game, like all goals were scored, scored in the third period. They scored to go up. One nil. Uh, three minutes later, with five minutes left in the game, it's one all. Eight seconds to go. Uh, Nashville get in front, and then with one second to go, Nashville score the empty net. So <laughs> it's um, probably a game they should have ended up with the win. I, I just wanted to point that one out. Yeah, no, nah, and that's again, you know, a game they they lose three one, but they lost it what within mm. in the last eight seconds. So. I'll, I'll make Man. my prediction now. If they do make the playoffs, they'll probably be the team to watch because they lose so much in OT, but OT is different in playoffs. I think they could be the team to watch of the Dark Horse yeah, and, if they and make I, the playoffs. And, and, and that's the thing about this team is because of how they grind and they've got a goaltender, and if, as long as they can stay within, you know, either even or within a goal, they're always a chance. Um, so, you know, that's why they're going to probably float around this 13 to 20 position for the entire season and it'll depend on whether they make a wild card spot or not but yeah i just i don't know i'm not i'm just not sold on them all right uh 17 for me i have an interesting one i have the la kings moving out of my top 16 even though i know for me (laughs) (laughs) yeah so they move out for me i know standings wise i think they're 14th um I think they're probably around that same position in points percentage, but they're two, four, and four in the last ten. Uh, in regards to the results this week, they didn't win a game. Lose to the Capitals in regulation. Uh, they lose to Tampa in OT. Uh, Florida uh, OT loss, and then they lose to reg- in regulation to Detroit. And yeah, well, I think they've been on a slide for a while. I think they've got some some issues with Dubois, just his production. He's on like the third slash fourth line. And that's purely because he's just not good enough to crack the top two because um, how good they, they are in the centers. But I think there needs to be a, a little bit of change up there because they've been on a slide for a while and they're competitive in every game, kind of like the Islanders. But yeah, I'm concerned. For sure. I mean, it is, you know, any time a team goes two, four and four, in the last 10, it's, it's cause for concern. So, yeah, look, the OT losses sort of helped them a little bit, um, soften that blow. But, um, yeah, you definitely got to be wondering what's going on at the moment. So just wait and see, I guess. Mm. All right, 15 for me. Another team from the Pacific having a really poor run considering how well they started, the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, I think we both predicted this fall off um, oh, at, at the start at the start of the season. One hundred percent. A weaker schedule definitely helped them, um, and now they're coming up against some stronger opponents. They're not getting the job done. Um, for example, this week they played the Colorado Avalanche, where they lost three nil, and then they beat Boston on a back to back, which was quite impressive, two one uh, in OT, and then they lose to the Calgary Flames today, three one. Um, yeah, so, you know, when they're not playing the likes of the Ducks and, uh, Chicago and, and stuff like that, um, they're, or oh, and San Jose, um, they're sort of struggling a little bit at the moment. So, uh, they benefited, I mean, they're still seventh in the standings or ninth in the standings or whatever it is, but they benefited off of a weak schedule, um, as of what kind of happens when you're in the Pacific and the West. Um, but yeah, they're sort of on that slide now that they're playing some more difficult teams. Um, I still think they're a very good side. I just think they're getting found out a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, they're three, seven in the last 10. Uh, they only scored two regulation goals uh, in three games this week and then the one in OT. So, uh, there's a lot of offense that needs to be fixed there. (laughs) Um, because keeping your teams to three goals, um, one goal essentially and three goals, you know, that's winnable um, in a sense. Uh, on to 14 for me, New Jersey Devils. Um, no movement there. 
I feel like this is probably the most beautiful spot for them for me. Uh, just because they're probably top five in regards to offense and defense, but they're probably like 32nd, 30th in regards to goaltending. And I think that just equals around 14, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, they're weak. They OT lose to Tampa in a game they probably could have um, could have and should have won, and then they four uh, one Florida in a game they probably could have and should have lost. So yeah, it's well, um it's it's a story of goaltending, isn't it? You look <laughs> at the Tampa game and they played pretty well defensively, and uh, I don't know if you watched the OT goal, but Vanacek uh, for them, he sh- like he, he should have saved that, um, but he doesn't. And then you go to the Florida game, as as you said, you know, they're heavily outshot, but Nico Dawes stands on his head. Um, so I, I'm I'm wondering whether you're going to see Vanacek get either traded, as has been mentioned, or they just have actually, to trade. They have to or, trade. or actually just waived at this point, because I don't know <laughs> if anyone wants him. Um, and and see if they write out uh, Nico Dawes, uh, considering he's been okay since coming up, but. Yeah, it's definitely you're on the money. Um, you know, top five for offense and defense, and bottom for goaltending isn't a winning formula. <laughs> um, all right, all right, yeah. on to thirteen. Uh, shoot, well, who's my thirteen? There we go. Uh, Seattle Kraken. I mean, we spoke about the Edmonton Oilers turning their season around, but how about the Kraken? Um, they're nine oh and one or something in their last ten, but you know this this week alone they got three uh, three from three. Uh, they beat the Buffalo Sabers five two. They beat the Washington Capitals four one, and they beat the Columbus Blue Jackets today seven four. I mean, outside of uh, losing, uh, conceding four goals against the Columbus Blue Jackets, their defense has been really really good. Their goaltending's been fantastic. Um, you could say it was a little bit of a weaker uh, draw for them this week, playing, you know, two teams down the bottom end. But we know how good Buffalo's firepower is. Washington's been a lot better. And Columbus have that Columbus thing where they just, you know, they hold a lead for most of the game and then lose. So, yeah, I mean, the Kraken are right back in the hunt. Uh, Vegas and uh, Los Angeles have gone from thinking they've wrapped up the top three to now having to watch their tails um, of the likes of the Kraken and, and the Oilers. Yeah, I think um, one of the big pinnacle parts is uh, in showing in this week and why they're going on this run is they're finally scoring um, early on in the season. They just couldn't score, it seemed, and now they can, and so it's coming through. Uh, on cord has been phenomenal as well in, mm. in net, which has helped. All right, uh, on to number 12, the Nashville Predators. Um, it's yeah, good to see yeah. at least one of my two big calls in Nashville and Ottawa, at least one of them sort of panning out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we start off a uh, regulation loss to the Ducks. So it doesn't look good on the start, but then they go and beat Dallas 6-3. And then on the back-to-back, um, one of the only four teams to play the back-to-back today, and they beat Islanders 3-1. So, you know, it starts off rough, and then they blow it out of the park. So that's why they move up one for me, um, 12 probably the the top of this um middle pack in regards to 12 to probably around 16 17 whatever it is yeah i, I think you know they've been solid all year um and I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if uh if they do make a playoff spot mm. as you predicted um before and, the season and i also hate them just for uh, i watched the dallas uh, Nashville game uh, the first period and then I passed out and fell asleep and I woke up and they, it was a 6-3 game but there was no goals in the first period so um, they both they both suck for doing that to me <laughs> just wanted to say that's that a, look, that's a fair call that's a fair call I rate that alright on to number 11 I have the Philadelphia Flyers alrighty um, yep same thing yeah, look, I mean, these guys just won't go away. I think we say it every week. Um, when are they going to finally drop off? Or when are they finally going to maybe make some trades, uh, start this rebuild that they've claimed that they're doing? Um, but they just don't seem to go away. 
They lose 1-4 to uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins with a rough start, um, but then they 3-2 shootout win against Montreal, uh, 4-3 overtime win against Minnesota, and then on the back-to-back, they 2-0 blank the Jets to break the Jets' run. Um, I mean, 3-1, like, what else can you ask for? Six out of eight points. They did have probably a softer draw, or half of it anyway, in terms of Montreal and Minnesota, who are also on a massive slide. But that win against the Jets, especially on a back-to-back, is just phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what to make of them. Like, I had to move them up pretty much because of that Jets win. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it, just... it shows you don't need the flashy as a player. You need good structure and whatnot. But um, I guess my only concern was going to shoot out against Montreal and OT against the Wild. Uh, that was my concern. But the Jets' win really um, flipped their week into a real big positive. And Jamie Drysdale off to a fantastic start as a flyer. I love the trade for the Flyers. You know, we said it in the, um, the video we dropped. Um, I think Drysdale has some tremendous upside and he's already off to a flyer with them. Um, no pun intended. Hopefully he keeps it up. Alrighty, starting off the top 10, team moving down a little bit, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And look, I, I've been, you know, impressed, but slightly not impressed with the Toronto um, because I feel like they're, they're capable of more. But they start off 7-1 win against Sharks. You know, I guess as a Toronto fan, you're probably expecting them to lose that, but they don't. Um, the Islanders, they OT lose that one, 3-4, and then they um, lose 5-3 to Colorado. So honestly, competitive against two good teams and gets the uh, big win over the bottom team in the league. Uh, I, I just think um, they're just showing a little bit weaker uh, than regards to, obviously, a team we haven't talked about yet, like Edmonton going on their run, who hops them and whatnot. So that's that's why they moved down the 10 for me. To go pick up Martin Jones to help you in your goaltending woes. <laughs> it's a bit worrying. And then he then he's then he plays good. <laughs> and then he plays good. Well, he did that for Seattle last year too, but you know, make make of it what you will. Uh all right. Nine for me, I've got the Dallas Stars. Oh, I have got interesting one. Eight. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was expecting to have maybe top five, and you've got them at eight. Faded, faded boys, faded. A hundred percent. Yeah, look, they still had a great week in in sense. They get a four nil uh, shutout win against Minnesota. Um, they get a seven two win against Minnesota again. Um, but then they lose to the Nashville Predators three six. Um. However, they finish the week on a back-to-back against the Chicago Blackhawks, where they win 3-1. So, 3-1 and one for the week, 6 out of 8 points. Um, probably an easier schedule, especially with... I didn't think I'd say that two weeks ago with Minnesota, but apparently Minnesota are shit again. Um, yeah, so good time to face Minnesota and going up against the Blackhawks. But they did what they needed to do. They get 6 out of 8 points. They only moved down because of uh, two teams below them just playing better hockey at the moment, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, on to my nine, um, the big one, New York Rangers. Oh. That is, that is I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I moved on them, but like, <laughs> oh, I think they're seven for me. Yeah, so I th- feel like it just had to be done. They're four, five, one in the last ten. Uh, they're basically the same points percentage as Dallas. Uh, so they start off the week, 6-3 loss to Vancouver. Hard game, and they outshoot them by 16. But then they go and lose 5-2 to St. Louis, though they have 22 more shots. But then they go and lose 3-2 to Washington, though they had six more shots. So don't win a game. You outshoot all your opponents, and you have a plus 44 shot differential. Um, I guess only New York Rangers things? I don't know. I don't know what to make of that, but... Yeah. They've been they've oh, been on a little there, slide for three weeks now, so that's why I've made the move. They have, and it's huge too because you held on to them at number one for a bit longer as well. I had moved to the Jets, but you were like, no, 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 no. They've been there all year, and now you've gone <laughs> fuck nuts, nah, stuff is. You've uh, you burnt me, you've slid, um, and now you're pushing down. But no, nah, look, 
they are. They are on, are on a bit of a slide, but they are also a good enough team to bounce back from it, and I expect them to do so. All right, number eight for me, I have the big bad Boston Bruins. Boston Bruins? Um, that is big Bruins. Number six for me. Ooh, 66. Cool. Um, yeah, look, I mean, pff, uh, normally when a team goes one and three on a week, you don't expect them to be over 500. But that's what happens when you take every game to overtime. They 3 4 shootout loss to the Colorado Avalanche, and then they, on the back to back to the Arizona Coyotes, go 3 4 in overtime. Then they go up against the Vegas Golden Knights, lose 1 2 in, you guessed it, overtime. And then today, they take St. Louis Blues to overtime, and this time they actually win it four to three. So they take five points from the week, five out of eight. So even though they went one and three, they're still above 500, so it's still a good week somehow. Um, and, and you can't really hate on them because they're still very competitive in every single one of those games. Um so it was hard. They did move down, but again, it wasn't really because of their week. It was more about what other teams around them had done. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, on to my seven, I have the Edmonton Oilers. Six. Yes. They are at seven for me. They um, start off 2-1 win against uh, Chicago, though they're only held to 15 shots. Then they 3-2 OT win against Detroit. This time they hold the other team to 17 shots, but... They had 47, but they go to OT. And then they um, OT win against Canadians. They have 41 shots. They only concede 24. I think my big concern is, like, they obviously put up a lot of shots, but they don't really put up a lot of goals. And then um, they're still letting the teams be in it, even though they're having, you know, 20 or so shots. So that's why I've held back. But, you know, last 10, you know, they've <laughs> they've won them all. So they, ha- yeah. that, they have to be where they are, obviously, and uh, it's been a great turnaround. Um, n- oh. no, nobody's talking about them anymore at the bottom. And... 18 and 3 mm. or something like that. It might even be 19 and 3 now. It's just phenomenal, the turnaround. Actually, I think it's 19 and 3 with today's win. So, yeah. Yeah, incredible. Honestly, incredible turnaround. All right. All right, on to the top five. I have the Carolina Hurricanes. There you go. Yeah, I mean, look, again, another team that sort of was flip-flopping for a little bit. Uh, their defense was very questionable, but they seem to have found their groove. Um, they only played the two games this week. Uh, they 6-3 Anaheim Ducks uh, get the win, and then they 3-2 in overtime, get the win against the Pittsburgh Penguins today. So, look, perfect week for them. Um, prior to this, they've been they've been really good as well. They they seem to have found their defensive structure again um, that they're well known for. So, yeah, I mean it's it's up and up for Carolina. And with the Rangers sort of taking a bit of a backward step, that number one spot in the Metro might be up for grabs. Hmm. Alrighty, uh, number four, Colorado Avalanche. And this team, another unbeaten team this week, beating Boston in shootout. They uh, blank the Vegas Golden Knights um, 3-0, and then they beat Toronto 5-3. So three hard teams, and they get it done. I think this team's uh, just looking up on the up. I'm very afraid of them. Uh, you just had Landis Cog skate for the first time. Obviously, he's not going to be back, but he's actually he was actually out skating in the, um, when they knew they were filming it. So that's good for the Avs, and just a lot of things are up and up for them. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right, on to number three. I've got the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, number three, they are my number one. Oh, he's 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 gone for them. Jeez. Yes. Ooh. Damn. Nah, look, that's fair. Honestly, the top three. Like you could have had any of them at number one. I I feel. I, th- um, I think you could even you know. throw the abs in there. I think they're um. Oh, exactly. Very strong like, right yeah. now. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, exactly. Um. Well, I mean, yeah. Look, Vancouver had a fantastic week. They uh, I th- I believe it was the first time they've ever swept New York. Um. Or, so, uh, yeah. Look, impressive. 
um, from them. They beat the Rangers 6-3. Uh, they beat the Islanders 5-2. They then beat Pittsburgh 4-3 in overtime. And then they beat the Buffalo Sabres today 1-0. So 8 from 8. I 100% can see where you're coming from at number one. I could have had them there also. I chose not to. I went with the other two. But, um, yeah, they are absolutely playing out of their mind. There's no there's no turning back for them. I, I think they're going to be a playoff team this this season, guaranteed. Um, touch wood, wherever the fuck wood is. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't don't want to uh, <laughs> jinx them. But, yeah, they're, they're on fire. Yeah, no, you're right. And they got, what, four Canadian teams in my top ten. Um, you know, Vancouver and Winnipeg and whatnot finally getting talked about. They, like, they've been on a run, the 7-2-1. Uh, they're above 700 um, points percentage, one of the only three teams to do it. And, yeah, it's been an amazing season. That's why I have them at number one. But uh, my number three, Florida Panthers, just moving down one. And so they, they start off, they they beat St. Louis 5-1, OT win against um, LA, and then they uh, lose 4-1 today, even though New Jersey got, um I'd say, probably some lucky goals as well in regards to bounces and maybe a goal that Bob should have saved. But, you know, that's sometimes how it goes, especially against, uh, you know, top 16 teams, that, that can happen. But they've just been super strong. I think they're still... You know the power, one of the powerhouses of the league still, and that's why I'm at three, obviously. Hundred percent agree with you. They've been an absolute tear, and I guess that leads lead lead leaves us with uh, my number one, and it's the Winnipeg Jets again. Um, I know they lost their first game in in a while. However, I'm not going to punish them for it. I still think they're the strongest team in the NHL right now. Um. So, yeah, look, their week, um, they went 3-1 and one still again. So they 6-2 the Arizona Coyotes at the start of the week. They 5-0 the Columbus Blue Jackets. They 2-1 win against Chicago. And then they lose 2-0 to the Philadelphia Flyers, uh, obviously breaking their franchise record run. Um, but again, like, I, it was a weaker uh, fixture for them this week, but... That loss against Philly, Philly have been tough to play against, so I don't really hold it against them. They only conceded five goals in the four games as well. Um, so yeah, I, I just I think they're playing phenomenal at the moment. So it was hard to to move them out of that number one spot. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, I've done it. You know, Vancouver just had an extremely hard um, week, and they were flawless. And Winnipeg had probably the easiest week of all the ones we've talked about, I'd probably say. And, you know, it was pretty much flawless, but I am just concerned that, you know, I've seen it a few times now that te- teams like Chicago and whatnot, they're only winning by one goal. <laughs> um, very close games. So sometimes they're not able to put up the big scores, but they did it this week with a 5-0 um, and then the 6-2 with Arizona and um, Columbus. So, look... Extremely, I think top four all have viable options for the number one spot, honestly. I think you have an argument over uh, any team for that spot. And from there, probably 6 to 10, 11 is probably competitive. Then 12 to maybe 17, 18 is probably where I'm at. Or then the 16 to 24. Like, they're my brackets on how, yeah. how this has gone. But um, extremely interesting yeah, um, half point of the season. Yeah, for sure. It's been uh, fantastic. And I'm just glad to see that we've got options at the number one um, ranking. Because and they're different teams. There, I was, you know, it's, yep. I think the last like decade, it's always been the sort of the same teams. And it's like, oh, it's boring um, in, <laughs> in some way or another. You know, it's always like Tampa or something. So I'm glad, you know, teams you don't normally talk about, like Vancouver, Jets, um, even Florida, uh, they're up there. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it's, it's been a great season to watch so far. All right, don't forget to like the video, comment below what you think of our power rankings. Uh, Leave your your power rankings in the comments below as well. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit all notifications on. But till next video, guys, we'll catch you. Bye, guys.